By you answering these questions, I guarantee you're gonna get ripped off on your next car purchase. Car salesmen are sneaky. They know all the best questions to ask you to get you to pay the highest profits. Car salesmen are also extremely smart, very well trained, and they practice the art of closing the deal every single day. I'm gonna share with you the questions to never answer on a car lot. And if you don't watch this entire video, it's only gonna do one thing, cost you time, money, and major frustration. How are you? What brings you in today? That is actually one question you definitely want to answer the salesman that you're going to have approach you or you approach on the dealership slot. You want to get it out the gate right up front of why you are at the dealership. You want to know before you come here what your wants and needs are, what's your end game of car shopping. So make sure you do answer the question of what brings you into the dealership. So I see you're looking at this Chevy Malibu Redline. Yeah. It looks like a pretty nice car. Absolutely. Is this something you're gonna be paying cash for? Your financing or a little bit of both? Uh, finance. Oh, excellent. What kind of payment are you looking for? Mm, I'd like to keep around 350 a month. That's actually two questions in one, but they're always asked at the same time. And you never want to answer that question on the lot. Tell me why, sleazy car salesman. Sleazy car salesman, what? <laughs> so as I've taught you guys in the past, you never want to walk into a dealership and let them know that you're financing or paying cash. If that question is asked, just sit there and like, hey, haven't made up my mind yet. I haven't decided yet. The reason you don't want to talk about payment is because they're going to land you on a car that gets you and maximizes the monthly payment so that way they can maximize their profit. Hey, that's absolutely perfect. I'm glad to hear that. What type of credit do you got? Uh, I'm not really sure, but my husband's credit's good. So that right there was a perfect scenario of a car salesman, as Mr. Chevy dude says, sleazy car salesman, asking you qualifying questions on the lot. The reason car salesmen ask that question is because two things happen there. One, they're pre-qualifying you to figure out how to work their car deal. Yes, I said their car deal, not your car deal. They're in control. Again, remember, they're the professionals. They do this every day. We as consumers do this every four to five years. Two. They also pre-qualify to see who the real buyer is. In this scenario, Mrs. is here, husband's not. Husband's the real buyer because he's got the credit. So you don't answer those questions so that way they can't pre-qualify you or pre-judge you on a car deal. That all sounds perfect. This is a pretty pricey car, so it's gonna take a substantial amount of money down to get to 350. So how much money are you planning on putting down? Oh, um, maybe 500. <laughs> So again, this is a pre-qualifying question because now they need to figure out how to work their deal, not your deal, right? So if you have no money down, Mrs. Chevy dude's being goofy and saying only $500 down, but that's a real scenario that happens on the car lot every single day. So if you can't get to 350 on this brand new Malibu, what do you think a car salesman is gonna do? They're gonna take control of their deal and take you to a car they can get you to 350 per month. Hey, that all sounds good. Do you have anything that you're gonna trade in? I think so. Um, my husband doesn't know it yet, but we're going to get rid of his 2020 Corvette. So this is the vehicle you're trading in? Yep. All right, sweet. What's, uh, what's it worth? What are you trying to get out of it? My husband told me he paid 50 grand for it, so I can get my money back out of it. Excellent. Car salesman will always try this technique with you. It's called trying you on. So basically what we just demonstrated in there was we tried you on by seeing what you think your car is worth. We bring a little funny there saying that this car is worth $50,000, but that type of scenario happens all the time. Two things happen here in the car salesman mind. One, if you sit there and undervalue your trade-in, they're absolutely ecstatic. They think they can steal your car from you. But if you overvalue your trade, now they're gonna be like, well, where'd you come up with that dollar amount? What research have you done with there? How, Kelly Blue Book doesn't buy cars. NADA is always high. They're always gonna start throwing out curveballs to get you off your game. Now there is a time and a place that you do need to answer those questions. It's not on the car lot. I always love teaching people this analogy. If you see somebody that you're attracted to and you walk up to them and introduce yourself for the first time, you don't put your hand out, introduce yourself and say, will you marry me? 
Use that analogy when you're out car shopping. You have to answer these questions. The best time to answer these questions is when you're ready to make a purchase, when all parties are present, when your trade-in's here, and most importantly, when the salesman is ready to present you with the numbers so that way you can make a well-informed decision. So yes, you do need to answer these questions, but at the right time.